Spatial OS is a platform for developing, running, and managing your own multiplayer online game. It enables you to create huge multiplayer games without ever having to write a single line of network code. It accomplishes this using a distributed server architecture that's capable of delivering online worlds that are theoretically limitless. Now, I know what you're thinking. This is too good to be true, right? Wrong. In this video, I'm going to pull back the curtains on Spatial OS and explain how it delivers exactly what it promises. But first, this video is sponsored by Improbable, the creators of Spatial OS. If you're looking for a full stack multiplayer solution, then you'll definitely want to check out the Spatial OS Game Development Kit for Unity. It provides networking, hosting, and multiplayer features that help you quickly create your online multiplayer game. Sign up for free using the link in the description and get started today. Online game worlds are often hosted on a single server, so an MMORPG with 100 realms would need 100 different servers to run them all. This approach is fine, but it bounds each realm to the constraints of the server that's hosting it. The size, population, and simulation capabilities of any given world are dependent on the limits of the physical machine that's running it. Spatial OS solves this limitation problem by taking a completely different approach. It utilizes clusters of servers that all work together to serve up a single cohesive experience, removing virtually every limitation imaginable. So as a developer, how can you harness this power? Well, the answer is surprisingly simple thanks to Spatial OS SDK's usage of the Entity Component System pattern, also known as ECS. ECS is an architectural design pattern that's used heavily in game development. Let's break down how the Spatial OS SDK leverages ECS to give you access to its powerful infrastructure. We'll start with entities. Entities are the building blocks of your online world. They're the objects that bring your game to life. Players, NPCs, vehicles. If it has an effect on your simulation, then it's an entity. More importantly, entities are responsible for storing all of the data that's shared between each connected client. This data comes in the form of components. In Spatial OS, components are data containers that hold the state of each entity and define how other entities interact with them. They're consumed by systems, or workers as they're known in Spatial OS, who use them to produce the simulations that run in your game world. In Spatial OS, workers are really what do a lot of the heavy lifting. Workers are game engines that work together to provide a single, seamless experience. Each one is responsible for simulating a small portion of the entire game world. They do so by only operating on entities that 1. are located within the worker's area of focus, and 2. have a predefined set of component types. For example, physics simulation workers might only worry about entities that have position and velocity components. Physics Worker 1 would manage a group of entities in one area of the world, and Physics Worker 2 would manage another group of entities located in another area of the world that could potentially be on the other side of the map. Behind the scenes, Spatial OS uses load balancing to automatically create and shut down workers based on the current load of the system. There may only ever need to be one or two AI workers running at any given time, whereas Spatial OS might constantly need to be managing hundreds of physics workers to simulate all of the moving objects in your game. Either way, you don't have to worry about any of it. It's all handled for you so you can focus on developing your game. All right, so this is all great in theory, but how does it look in practice? Let's work through the code example found in the technical breakdown to find out. The example implements flammability in the game world, making certain entities susceptible to catching on fire. Each flammable entity must have the flammability component attached to it. Components are defined using the Spatial OS schema language. The schema language lets you define components that are language agnostic, so they can easily be integrated with any game engine. The flammability component has an ID, a boolean that represents whether or not the entity is on fire, and a command which workers can call when an entity is ignited. Now, let's look at how you can use workers in Unity to affect entities that are flammable. The propagate flames behavior has a reference to the flammability class, which gives the model behavior access to the workers that are responsible for entities that have the flammability component. The nested writer class specifically lets it write to these components, which it does in the onTriggerEnter method. 
Breaking down this code, if the game object is on fire when it collides with another game object, then it'll use the flammability worker to send an ignite command to the entity that's associated with that game object. If the entity has a flammability component attached to it, then its ignite method will be called, which is handled by the handle ignite method. The handle ignite method uses the flammability worker to set its is on fire variable to true. Now, if that code seemed a little too complicated, then don't worry, because Spatial OS has a game development kit that's designed specifically for Unity. The GDK is tightly integrated with Unity's ecosystem, so it's much easier for Unity devs to get up and running. It also comes with a set of feature modules that include multiplayer solutions for common mechanics like player movement, health, shooting, and more. Each one has been tested at scale, so you can use it to quick start your own project with confidence. On top of that, the entire source code is available on GitHub, so you can explore the code and extend it as needed. The Spatial OS GDK for Unity is available to all users who have a valid Unity license. If you're interested in trying it out, then be sure to sign up using the link in the description. Once you've signed up, you'll be taken through a simple onboarding process that'll guide you through setting up the stack and deploying an FPS starter project. The starter project is a great way to learn more about the development experience with the GDK. It includes tutorials that cover topics like how to implement health packs, which give a more practical look at Spatial OS. And on top of all that, the starter project supports over 200 players for free. So be sure to invite all of your friends to your deployment or invite simulated players. Need a little more convincing? Check out Worlds Adrift, a game that was actually created in Unity using Spatial OS. This community-crafted MMO uses real-time network physics using hundreds of Unity Engine instances in the cloud. And best of all, it's already live, so you can check it out right now and see the power of Spatial OS firsthand. Are you thinking about developing an MMO? Let me know all about it in the comments. Interested in discussing Spatial OS or any other game dev related topics with like-minded individuals, then be sure to join the Infallible Code public Discord server. And if you found this video helpful, leave a like and a comment letting me know what you thought. Last but not least, be sure to subscribe with notifications on for more Unity videos just like this one. I'll catch you in the next video. Thank you to all of my patrons, and a special shout out to Glasswell Entertainment, NZ, Richard Stance, Thomas, Will and Dingo, and Yakov.